Okay, while we're waiting for everybody to join, I'm going to go ahead and start with a poll, just kind of test it out, break the ice a little bit. Um, it is, let's see, my first poll is, let's see how well that works. Do you like cold pizza? Looks like a lot of folks are not into cold pizza. <laughs> I kind of thought there would be, you know, there aren't going to be a lot of people halfway in, halfway out, either like you, you really don't. Okay, I'll kind of start by introducing myself. A lot of you guys know me as a guy on the YouTube videos. Um, my role here is customer education manager, something along those lines. Uh, I'll have to look at my email signature, but uh, I'm here to help you and uh, learn how to use the software, help you, uh, encourage you to use different aspects that maybe you didn't know to help grow your business. Uh, I've been working with a version of Darkroom for about just about 20 years uh, and um, I have about, uh, about 24 years experience uh, working um, with in photography, photo labs, event printing, uh, those type of things. So I started off in college managing a, um, a Pro photo, or I'm sorry, not a pro photo, uh, managing the college lab, um, Mac and uh, photo lab, and then moved on to um, multiple labs, uh, All American Photo, uh, Digital Pro Lab, Photo Express, and uh, Height Photo Lab, all which have a, uh, a pretty um, good reputation in the photo lab industry. Okay. Um, so let's see where we are with our attendees. We've got 28. We're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, the first part of this is going to kind of be basic for a lot of users. If you've been using this, we're just going to kind of go over the general idea of how Darkroom, um, and I'm in core, I actually want to be in pro. Um, this is a, a, pro, uh, a core class but there's one specific thing i'm going to be showing at the end that's going to require pro so um uh and i'll let you know if i if i go into something that's pro specific so for all intents and purposes you can think of this as uh specifically darkroom core so the photo library is going to be where you organize your images import them organize them um, and then back them up if you need to. Um, if you're doing uh, event photography, kind of what we're talking about here, I don't know that backing up is as important as maybe like a studio or a uh, school photographer, but it's made to work in many different workflows. We're primarily talking about uh, event photography. So the next tab is going to be your photo workshop, and that's going to be where you edit and kind of mix things up and work on your images um, in event photography this is a little less important you should be capturing and printing not working on color too much that should all be done you know, try to uh, do all that in camera as much as possible but you do have the option of doing some cropping or um, some effects and we'll get into some of the editing possibilities in the uh, photo workshop in just a second then it's going to go into the orders tab and a lot of users completely forget about this because for some users it's not really that important if you're auto printing it's going to come in here and just send straight to the printer but uh you can pause orders here and then release them um, so somebody can place an order and somebody on another computer could um, then collect money and release the order so the orders uh, created in one computer and then released from a server. So that's where I see this being used uh, more often. So for some people, you almost forget about this, but uh, it's a good idea to look at it every so often because it can get, get backed up with orders. And that a lot of times this can help you troubleshoot issues. So that's orders tab. And then the pro services and the setup tab almost can be kind of combined. And um, a lot of people say, well, why aren't they combined? They actually are. 
if you look right in here, you'll have your um, your internet account and your lab account. And we're going to cover what's in here in just a little bit towards the end um, for doing some upselling. Oops. But uh, they just added this as an easier way to get into those um, extra services. Uh, photo, uh, photo reflect and lab electricity. And we'll cover that in just a little bit. Now your setup tab is where you're gonna do most of the work before the event. If you're playing around in this area at an event, uh, you're, that's a bad idea. You should set it up before and um, you, then you shouldn't have to come into this area really. But that's where we're gonna start today. Today, we're going to start with uh, just adding a camera. And in 9.3, so those that you're using uh, 9.2, you'll actually uh, be kind of jelly of this. Um, I should, let's see, camera options. I want to be warned if the camera is not present. So let's, uh, let's turn this on. So you can hear that my computer just recognized the camera. Earlier you saw a little blinky light right here saying there's no camera detected. Without having to do anything, my camera's already detected. That's new in 9.3, where if there is a supported camera, it's gonna auto detect. And that's really, really helpful. And I'll show you with a client computer in just a moment or towards the end. So my camera is ready to go. And that's gonna bring us to our set the second poll. Asking about cameras, because uh, this is helpful information that we're going to take and uh, hopefully uh, help improve our software based on you guys' responses. Um, so polls, back to list. Second poll is asking, what cameras do you shoot with? Um, we currently uh, support Canon cameras, uh, Nikon, most DSLRs. Uh, a lot of people really want Sony. That might be something in the future. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you a way that you can use an unsupported camera uh, a little further down. So that is coming. So we have our camera connected. The next thing we're going to need is uh, a printer. So I have, well, it wasn't supposed to be here. Um, I'm going to remove this printer real quick. Uh, I'm going to be adding a DIA. Uh, DS40 from DNP, and it's a directly supported printer in uh, in Core and Pro. Now, this is uh, when we get into a little bit of differences. You're going to see in Pro we have a lot larger list, but for your die sub printers, and uh, those uh, should be in uh, both Core and Pro. So there's DS40, and you can see that it's already detected what type of media I have. So the setup for a uh, directly supported printer is uh, that easy. You just add the printer, and I'm going to go ahead and just move it up just because I like to stay organized. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another printer that's not really a, uh, an event-style printer, um, but just to show you kind of thinking outside of the box what you can do with um, Core Edition. So I'm going to add a Windows printer, and this is actually just a color laser printer that I have that I like using for uh, color color laser printing. So, and it's an eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave the settings alone. But if you have a Windows printer added in Windows, you can also add it to Darkroom. Um, and if you look right here, I have a Dymo label printer. I have an Epson uh, receipt printer. Um, there's my DX100 um, and uh, there's my Epson P6000. So um, there we have two printers that we've just added, my directly supported 4x6 die sub printer and then an 8.5 by 11 um, laser, color laser jet printer. Um, so next thing on our list is we're going to add a four by six um, print. And I already have one here and we're gonna kind of come back to this package group. But what I want you to think about uh, a package group of is what you're offering for um, that specific group you're working with. So you can have multiple package groups. 
Um, and whoops, I added a package. I'm sorry. I'm gonna create a new group and I'm gonna put zero two so I can easy to find. And that's just giving it a list. And um, within there, you have your actual um, packages that you're offering. So you can think of this as if you're a studio photographer, you can add an eight by 10 in wallets, but us, we're um, doing event photography. So we're probably gonna add one or two printers, uh, one or two print sizes. And for this one, it's gonna be a four by six. If you had a five by seven, you could add it there as well. Um, so, and then I'm gonna just select from my uh, six inch prints, four by six. So that package is ready to go. My camera is ready. Um, if I switch over to my photo workshop, let me create a new catalog. Um, I should now be able to just in the most basic sense of it. Okay, now when we capture an image, switch to our photo workshop. A little bit overexposed, but we can now I'm gonna change to that new group we made, run our four by six and place the order. And there it goes. Okay, so camera's connected. Thank you for that, Wally. I appreciate it. Um, so our camera's connected, our printer's connected. Next thing we're going to go to is uh, uh, the photo workshop. So um, let me, this is very specifically why I have these pictures. Um, so we have the ability to do a little bit of editing. You can work in this area and you can know where your five by seven, your eight by 10 is gonna crop. So if somebody orders an eight by 10, you wanna make sure everything's in. That is your, your eight by 10 crop line. Um, if you have a style that you want to just automatically apply, um, you can, let's say, uh, increase the shadows, kind of give a little bit of HDR effect, uh, your contrast, sharpening, um, a more warm tone. And then you can save it to an attribute for your system or for your catalog, and it'll automatically apply those changes. So if you want everything to be in black and white, you can then uh, select black and white and then apply attribute or uh, save attribute to a system defaults. On this image, we have um, a little blemish right there. I'm going to use, I have my retouch op br brush set to my retouch workshop. So when I click on it, I should be able to go in and just very quickly uh, get rid of that blemish and then uh, save retouches for something that's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little extra work. Uh, this is where Photoshop comes in pretty handy. I can take my image and drag it into um, Photoshop. There it finally goes. Okay. And then I would just save it back. Um, let's say... and then uh save or do whatever retouching any type of uh, photoshop work that you do and then save it back and um
it'll save over the original and you just refresh and we're just gonna clone that out do some real quick photoshop work okay so and then when i save the file You can see that it's now updated with those Photoshop edits. So it's a good way to, to, if you're using the retouch brush, to have kind of the best of both worlds. So uh, next on the list is we're going to create a template. Um, and uh, it's going to be just a, a kind of a simple template. Um, It's going to be this guy right here. So when you're building your templates, uh, if you're a booth user, this might be a little bit new to you. Um, you want to make sure your templates are stored in, or your graphics are stored in a location where they're going to reside permanently. Um, so this is going to be a four by six horizontal template. Um, I'm just giving it somewhat of a descriptive name. My graphics are always stored right next to where I'm going to save my template. And where you want to save your template is inside your X drive so that um, um, if you ever have to move your software to a new computer, it's then available. And when we get into networking in just a second, you're going to see that um, if it's not stored on a in the X drive, the graphics actually wouldn't show up on a networked computer. So there's my background. I'm going to add a photo. Let me use a predefined mask um, to give it rounded edges. And these are just masks that are built into the software, but you can use your own masks to have your own shapes. Um, I'm going to show you another one in just a second when we're um, at doing some add-on packages. Um, and then frame and a shadow. And we're going to make it just a little bit smaller. And to kind of bring everything back in, I've taken some of the background image and duplicated it as a PNG. So anything, uh, if you want to have a transparency or an opening, you want to save it as a PNG. And you should see that checkerboard pattern inside Photoshop whenever you're creating your um, your graphics. So I'm browse and I have um, my and that's just kind of kind of pull everything together uh, by adding a foreground object. And you'll see this used uh, uh, in the very next um, template where uh, we're uh, putting objects behind each other and we're changing objects and with green screen where it'll help out. So we're going to save it as a new border. And then, so you can see I also have a green screen version of, of the same template. And instead, I just, uh, instead of having uh, it set with a predefined mask, I, I would select chroma key and then really fill the whole background. So that's that template and some cancel changes if we have a an image that we want to um say, apply a border to we click b as a shortcut key and that will take us into our templates if you're seeing sample templates and you're not seeing your own uh you can change the group well, that's coming off on that side. But if you uh, click right here, there's a drop, uh, a menu that pops out, which is showing up on my other screen. 
Um, and you would click change group, and then you can select from a different group. So this is the one that we just created. From here, we can edit the image if we wanted to zoom in crop, and then click print uh, for a four by six, and uh, place order. Um, the next, uh, we're gonna kind of go back and forth between the photo workshop and the and the setup tab, so you can see how each one works, and then we're gonna test it out and see how it actually functions. Uh, so I'm going to create this template right here, and it's made for green screen, but it's going to use a, a graphic list to hide in a Santa. So if you have, um, if any of you have had small children, you know that uh, the first couple times Santa can be a little bit, uh, can scare them. So you can do this setup without a Santa and then superimpose Santa right then and there. Uh, let me show you how to do that real quick. So it's gonna be essentially the same thing, a four by six. Um, and uh, just click eight for horizontal. Oops. Uh, first, we're gonna add our graphic which is this background. And then we're going to add a list. Which is going to um, include our Santa. And we have a couple different poses. So there's no Santa, so you can send one and two. And because the original graphic, you don't see any updates, the original PNG in that list, or the first PNG, is set to not have anything. It's hidden so that I can go and turn it on or leave it off if I want. Then we're going to add a photo object set to chroma key. And that's where the image is going to be. Santa is going to be behind the graph. The, the person and uh, save as new border. Sorry, so, some things are coming up on the screen. So if you see uh, what should have been a, a save dialog and it, it just disappears um, or um, it's because it popped up on a separate screen. So within our um, Photo workshop. I'm gonna go ahead and select this template, and I have an image. It's uh, mocked up as if it was in green screen. So there's a little girl sitting on a chair, um, and then there's a green screen background behind. Um, and this little option right here popped up, and right now it's set to no Santa. Um, if we toggle through, we can have different Santas that show up. Uh, so this is a good option for different objects either behind an image or the background image if you had a green screen you wanted uh you captured an image then they go to the sales station somebody can cycle through the background images uh and with the parent and then allow them to choose and make something uh, a little bit more custom to um to them so um i like that center right there um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, print that. And um, so one thing you'll notice that happens over and over is I'm getting this, um, this pop, uh, it goes here and I have to put place order. I can update that package. Um, so it auto prints. So I have my four by six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a package that I'm using to upsell for people. They've gotten their picture taken. It might have been included. Now I want additional money from this image that I've captured. 
So I'm going to, uh, I have, might have different things I can offer. So here, um, it's going to be a, oh, Uh, I'm going to set up a quick print, charge $30 for it. And really, it's just a 4x6 package, or a 4x6 print. Um, but I'm going to add a template. I've already created the template. Um, it's just a 4x6 with two circles, uh, a two images, same image, but they have a predefined mask of a circle. So, um, so in this situation, I uh, might have, let's go with this little boy. Um, I captured this image, printed it out, and, and I tell him, hey, I have these ornaments that you can add on. I'll print it out, and essentially just, I'm going to hit the number two key because it corresponds right here so um what should happen is it's gonna okay what would happen is it would print out like that and i hand them this and this might cost me five bucks but i handed them something that i can charge a little bit more money for um no globe so just kind of giving some ideas and just to prove that i mean these are this is stuff that parents like uh, these are the every year we update it with new photos of our children. So parents buy this stuff, and I know that because I'm a parent. Um, and it can be expensive. So, okay, we got, um, we're going to move on to uh, our hot folder camera. So I said earlier we would uh, show you how to set up a non-supported camera. As long as you have a way to get the image from the camera to a folder, you can use the hot folder camera. It's uh, switch to that. Okay, and on my desktop, I should have well, let's create a folder. So that's now my hot folder camera. If I drag an image into there, it should import into darkroom. And that allows me to move the little camera back to this computer. And that'll make sense in just a moment. Okay. So back in darkroom, and how I would do this because I'm a Canon shooter. Um, is I would use the EOS utility, and I would tell it, um, drop images into this folder. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy these guys real quick, just so I have images to show it, use. Okay, so I have my demo folder with uh, that glorious picture. Um, if I set my EOS utility, and this is something that would happen automatically, I'm gonna do it manually so you can see how it's all working, but I can then drag that image in And you can see that uh, as I'm capturing, transmits the image, it would then import automatically any image that I drop into that folder. 
So this is really helpful if you, uh, you're you using a wireless camera, um, you just use like the EOS utility or Sony has uh, their own version Nikon. Um, but that is using, I call it unsupported camera, but it's using the hot folder camera to auto import. So, oh, I missed my, my last poll. Wanted to ask about uh, your graphic editor that you're using for templates. Um, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a Photoshop person. I'll use Canva and Illustrator every so often, but uh, I know a lot of people like Canva. And the reason why I ask is because I'm making content and maybe we should include some of these other outside of Photoshop. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an auto print package. We haven't, or before I do that, let, let me explain what Event Gallery is. So Event Gallery is an online store, uh, not storefront, an online sharing site. Um, let me see if I can pull mine up. So you can see that uh, the uh, you can share your images through here, and a lot of booth users are already using this. Um, this is a great way to share. A lot of people don't know about uh, about Event Gallery with Cordish, and I'm going to show you a really good reason. This was a party that we had. Um, the QR code printed out, and then the, the kids can go through and scan. Um, and uh, have the download those images straight to their website using that code. Um, so I'm going to show you how we can do that with um, inside Darkroom Core. Um, so I have a package right here. Um, I said this is default. It's already pre-configured, but um, it's going to automatically up upload to Event Gallery, and it's going to go to my Santa One Demo Gallery, and it's also going to print out on a receipt printer. So uh, this is for somebody traveling light where they're capturing and then they're just sharing, um, not necessarily. Um, doing printing if we switch over to our camera options i'm going to show you how to do this with a with auto print so it automatically uploads we'll call it two um, it'll automatically upload and then print out on that receipt burner. Let me just verify the size on that print. Oh. So it's printing on a credit card size and it's using this template and just stealing that information so it's easier to set up. Auto print, upload, the print size. So it's going to automatically apply this template whenever I capture an image and it's going to automatically print. And we'll test that out by. Um, Popping an image into that folder. And I can now take my just a receipt paper. Scan the photo.
if we go to our site, you can see there it is. So that is um, using a receipt printer. But it, let's say I wanted to actually have a hard copy. That would be an example from this weekend where printed, added a template, added a QR code. The code you then works the same way. Scan. Let me see. Um, so, event gallery, I'm going to move on real quick and then we'll get into Q&A. Um, photo reflecting electricity. You have, a, uh, you have a network of labs that you can print to. So if you're doing event photography, you can then go and sell uh, additional op uh, items online. If I look right here um, and uh, I'm going to just publish. Um, you can see that two images were published. Um, and I'm going to, well, just republish. I have it assigned with a separate um, package group. Right here, where I'm selling holiday card, holiday mug, ornaments, and these are printed at my local lab. And then they would drop ship it. So I can capture images there, tell them, hey, you can view these and give them a card to my Photo Reflect site. You can view your images on uh, our Photo Reflect store, our online gallery, and purchase a digital, additional prints. Um, and just as an example, if I click on Pro Services, there's my Santa demo and the image is just uploaded. I can um, take this image and then order a holiday mug. And there we go. And then I'll send that image, uh, the, my lab will print it. So it's additional options. It's definitely worth checking out Photo Reflect, and uh, and um, they actually handle electricity. Um, the so before uh, before we get into questions and answers, there's one more thing I kind of want to talk about was uh, thinking outside of the box. It, it, you don't have to, it doesn't always have to be a four by six or a five by seven print. It can be um, keychains. It can be, uh, I have, uh, my daughter recently asked, hey, I want a jungle theme party and I want everything to be jungle theme and I want there to be a password. And I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to create a pass passport? That That's, um, so I, I created a passport. Um, and it was based on a eight and a half by 11. That's why I have this uh, colors or, uh, color laser jet printer added. And so the idea is that her friends can go around and do all these scavenger hunts. She put the whole thing together. Um, but it was in my garage and it didn't look so that great. There's one more thing that we have built in uh, with 9.3, and that is um, remove.bg. This is actually set up as green screen, and I knew that it's gonna uh, it was gonna be it's supposed to be outside, which wouldn't have looked so bad, but it was indoors, so switched to green screen, and um, I have my remove.bg account added, and that's gonna use AI to artificially or to actually remove the background. Um, and then I can make it, size it up, and there's her passport. Um, and it's gonna print out over there uh, in just a moment, but here's the, what would actually happen. And then all of her friends got something like this. So 
the idea is that core sorry that printer is going to make a little bit of noise for a little bit um core is made to work around your workflow that you come up and you have an idea and then you find a way to make it happen with all these different moving parts but essentially it comes down to i could have just or I actually did just take a picture in this passport and then they had to fold it. I wasn't going to fold them. So, um, I'm in pro and I said, there's a reason for that. And right here I have, uh, a little surface pro off to the side. Uh, with, core on it um, for larger events you can network pro have net uh, pro as your server and core edition as your client and let's see i'm going to create a, a, a new catalog on core so you can see I'm working on a completely different computer. And I'll, I'll kind of show you the little setup that I'm working with. I'm going to call it just one, two, three, four. And I'll save it in the events and then capture an image. Okay, so um, if we refresh, I have that image that I just shot, and I'll shoot a couple more. And you can see just how quickly it's moving over. Um, I have five to refresh. Um, and that is... Uh, and then from here, I can then place my orders. I can play, build my orders from another computer and essentially disconnect the keyboard. But this is what I'm working with um, just to get an idea of how small your uh, client workstation can be. Uh, so you could, it's all wireless. I could walk around and if I had a little strap, be capturing pictures at a party. And then I have a print station or sales station where people can go up and look at the pictures I, uh, I've taken. Um, and uh, similar to if you go to a restaurant, they, they capture pictures and they uh, bring them to you to sell. But in the situation, you, go, you get to go up and view and decide what you want to print. Well, do we have any good uh, uh, questions to go? I as well like my pizza with pineapple, and I know a lot of people are going to hate me now. Um, oh, I'm going to open up. Uh, there's another poll about sharing. Uh, so uh, the, um, while I'm waiting for questions to come in, um, sharing, uh, email, SMS, USB, flash drives, um, or event gallery. Uh, personally, I, I'm, I'm all about event gallery. Uh, USB flash drives, I've run into too many issues with them not being, having to be reformatted. Um, the uh, They're useful, but um, as people start moving away from actual USB-A computers, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Same with, uh, as you can see, I don't have CDs on there anymore. So that, that's kind of going um, away. The um, Everything everybody wants instant gratification on their phone, and that's where that event gallery with a QR code comes in really handy. Um, email and SMS, they have their issues. Um, at least with uh, a QR code and event gallery, if for some reason you lose internet, they might not get it instantly, but as soon as you upload it later, versus you can run into issues with uh, SMS or email. Um, is not sharing so if you haven't checked out event gallery it is uh we we handle it we support it it's directly integrated into darkroom 
Um, and probably one of my favorite things that we do. Um, we had one person that asked about um, using uh, two printers to do four by six and two by six. If you could quickly show that, I'm assuming probably a DNP. So uh, two printers using four by, um, four by six and a six by six, and it was their specific question. Six by six. So um, is there six by six media for? Use six by eight to print okay. six by six. Okay. So if I had another a second printer attached and it was uh, the same model, it would show up right here and it would say six by eight media. Or, yeah, six by eight media. Um, and it would all automatically. Looks like it got another ink uh, issue. Um, <clears throat> the right here, you just want to make sure six by six is checked. So, um, uh, and then it'll automatically print six by six on six by eight uh, media. Um, and then the four by six would, media printer would handle the four by sixes. Um, now, one thing you probably don't want is uh, the four by six checked on the six by, uh, six by eight media because then it might come out there. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Uh, the next question up was um, somebody said, can you walk through verbally from capture to edit to print? Walk through verbally. Um, I asked for more details, but they haven't provided any yet. So um, I, uh, apparently I, whenever I put my ink ribbon in, I was maybe a little bit more aggressive than I should have been. So I got an error on that. But I can, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print to my larger printer. Um, uh, let's see. And just because I have my, the camera attached to this other printer, I'm gonna use that one to capture it. And it will hopefully have um, me zoomed out enough um, so a little bit out of focus, but, uh, if I wanted to do, bring down the brightness a little bit, um, and let's say, uh, increase the sharpening and then I can print from here, select the, the package that, that I, uh, that I want to print out. So. <clears throat> and then it'll come out of that printer in just a moment. But uh, if it was a dice up printer, it'd be done by now. Do you have another one? I'm going to change it off. To uh, uh, somebody asked about using uh, some method to um, generate catalogs automatically and upload to photo. Uh, get, uh, to uh, event gallery, sort of like I think you did a blog post recently on using a QR code to create those. Yeah, this so this is why I wanted to show. It's something uh, we're we're working on. Um, um, I haven't released it because there's a couple things that we kind of need to make it a little bit easier for setup. But um, I have a QR code. Um, right here, and it has a uh, a URL uh, or a web address for my event gallery account. Let's see if I can pull this up. <clears throat> so my is dot photo, and then it has a. Uh, oops, sorry. It's why is that gallery? And then it has a unique identifier after that. And that unique identifier is then going to become a catalog. Um, and in um, 
let me show you here. So I have this tethered camera attached here. And I'm going to go to, there's an option right here for QR code. Hopefully this is, I know it's not coming in too, too well, um, but I will have a video that goes in, in depth. And, um, and then the QR code action is set to create sub event from URL in a QR code. So I'm going to create a new catalog. We'll call it Eugene, just as a, and this is going to hold everything, but what is important is it's going to create a new sub catalog. And um, so, sorry, you guys can't see it because it's on this other computer, but I'm going to turn on, on my QR code can scanner. And I don't have the option right here because I don't have camera attached there. Um, but... It just created a new catalog. And now whenever I take a few images, it's loading it into that new catalog. And um, what did I call it? I called it Eugene, right? There it is. There's the unique identifier. I'd like to chime in for just a second. Um, Darkroom has recently, Darkroom 9.3, recently added a lot of features that you can use QR codes for naming images, creating catalogs, and variety of things. Um, one recent thing that was added is allowing you to embed the QR code information into the comments section of an image in the EXIF data. And then we can pull that information out to use it for specific situations. For example, you can take, um, we, we have a, a generic site that you can create um, a QR code that will take someone to a site, a generic site, doesn't have our logo or anything on it, where they can enter their email or their phone number and it generates a QR code unique with their information. Then when the photographer starts to take their pictures, they can scan that QR code, it embeds that information and automatically will send that image to them by their phone number or their email address that's embedded in the image. And it works very slick and very fast. Um, the University of, uh, or Auburn University is, is using that right now for a big annual event that they do every year where people donate money to get pictures taken with their mascots. And over the weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday, they took a total of 7,200 images in those two days and automatically sent emails out just by scanning the QR code, taking the picture, scanning the next QR code, taking the picture. And uh, so everything was just fast and smooth and no entering information the second time or anything. I'll let that go back to Eugene now. So that same code that I scanned with my uh, my DSLR, my mirrorless camera, uh, I can now scan them on my phone and pull up the images. If I switch over and I have a new QR code, I turn on my scanner. It captures a code. And it's auto printing. Uh, automatically uploading to event gallery using the catalog name. So I can, once again, and there are, I probably should have moved so I don't look the same, but there are the new images that I just captured in my own separate catalog event gallery so if i refresh you'll see you should see two new catalogs with unique identifiers the thing we're waiting on is the ability to uh which i believe is coming while well, i can probably confirm this um that uh to hide these so that 
the way to access it is not through the gallery homepage, but through the QR code. So uh, add a little bit of privacy. Yeah, actually, we're working on a number of new features for Event Gallery coming up. Uh, one of those is uh, master settings, where you can uh, set up the various settings that you want a new gallery to have. Um, so that when a gallery is auto created by Darkroom Core or one of our other applications, it would start with a certain set of settings that would let you do this. The second thing, another thing that we're adding is the ability to customize the look and feel more so that you can uh, change the background colors, add larger logos uh, on a banner at the top of the event gallery, a lot of things like that. So there's a lot of new things coming to event gallery really soon. I'm going to add last poll uh, asking about selling online with you guys. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of photographers were really hesitant. This was a long time ago that, uh, I mean, I think everybody at this point wants to be able to buy their stuff online. And it's not. So uh, um, do we have any other um, good questions, bad questions, fun questions? Looks like the, um, almost half say it's a great idea to, uh sell photos online uh they want to know where they can get those backgrounds you were using the santa claus i assume um i uh i like uh, adobe stock which is stock.adobe.com um, um that's typically what i use for demonstration so uh, a lot of the images in the uh for transparency the images with my kids i i I've, uh i photograph the other ones are uh from adobe stock oh one more uh thing um so a lot of people get uh this type of setup for santa but remember um you have corporate holiday parties everybody uh gets together and that's where i've done a lot of my bigger events was these giant parties for big companies that had a lot of money to throw around. So that's always a real fun thing that you can just go, you know, uh, um, crazy with, you know, the different ideas that you can do, uh, so holiday, uh, corporate holiday parties, families are getting together. So maybe at your church, uh, put together and capture some good, uh, family portraits and, uh, a good opportunity to learn, uh, level up your skills on your friends and then new year's parties Somebody wants to know about uh skipping the uh, receipt page when you place an order that's a setting in the setup tab yeah so um there are a few things uh that you'll notice that didn't show up on my screen that might show up on yours uh copies prompt the um so we had the quick print which we went over um but these are typically things that I'll turn on. So if I want to go directly to the printer, I'll check quick print. If I'm getting the copies prompt and I just, I can click the number one twice to get two copies, that is going to be under uh, general settings, uh, prompt for copies, your prompts and warnings. And then the receipt printer is going to be under fulfillment options and receipt options. So if you don't want it to pop up, uh, you just uncheck this option right here. So, you know, it's like an answered three different questions, but those are um, three things that uh, kind of annoy me whenever I'm trying to get straight to the printer, but can be helpful for others. So if you want to turn them on, those are the options to turn them on. Yeah, depending on if you're uh, charging for the event or charging for the by the person that can be annoying to have that constantly pop up. So it's just a checkbox that you uncheck. Yeah. Okay, well, um, the uh, this will be recorded. It'll be edited uh, probably with some of the, the, the stuff we're working on left out, um, but it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and you can always find me once a week there or you can get the call in and uh, I'm usually available. So thank you all so much for chiming in and, and participating and Hopefully we'll do some more of these. Y'all have a great day and have a good Christmas. Thanks.